Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. If you have been looking at 3D pens and filaments, you may have come across this 3D pen accessory. It is officially called 3D Mate Base Design Mat, but I think of it as the mat. And it can help you create any number of three-dimensional projects. So let's look at how to use one of these. It is essentially a two-dimensional surface. And so the first projects you may make on it will be a bunch of flat parts to join into a 3D object later. And that's just fine. It will let you create some cool patterns, especially as you explore all the combinations of shapes and grids. Sometimes starting flat is actually an advantage, because it will let you process the surface in the oven until it's smooth in a way that can be done only while it's still flat. And the pattern variations are endless. And then you can shape it later, as I have done in the bracelet video. The link is below in the description. Yes, it will also help you make straight lines and perfect circles. But that's not the best part of the mat. The best thing about it is that it will teach you to think three-dimensionally. And that means up. All of a sudden you have all this available to you and more. So how do you get from 2D flat mat to a three-dimensional shape? In two ways. One is by continuing onto a perpendicular plane to the one you just made. Let's start with a simple cube. It is helpful to use something square for the first lift to get 90 degree angle. And then just continue from there. Perhaps using something to keep the project stabilized in the grooves. It's a lot cleaner than trying to attach together six squares. This way you always stay on the flat surface with each additional line you are adding, without doing any wild bridging. There will be time for that later. Let's take it a step further and make a simple cone. This will give you a chance to combine two different segments of the mat. And if you are a math teacher, it will give you an opportunity to demonstrate to the kids hands-on that, yeah, a cone is indeed a triangle with a circle stuck to the bottom of it. Because the mat is flexible, it will also let you create perpendicular planes using the folding method. So let's go for a small sphere here.
it's round enough. It will look even rounder once it's filled in. The second way to go 3D is creating parallel planes. Essentially, you need to somehow levitate your layers upwards and make them stay up there. Again, let's start small with just joining two layers and make a small cylinder. The trick is to keep the two centers aligned above each other along the central axis. This is great for making relatively small projects. If you need your projects bigger and stronger, you will need to simply add more layers. The trick to working with multiple layers is to keep your layers organized along the already mentioned central axis. To achieve this, I found the mat is quicker on its feet if you separate the segments into the six individual units. That way you can get better access by being able to rotate the projects around. And use them on a turntable with a central wire axis. The link to the video how to make one of these is in the description below. I like to use color coding under my mat segment so I don't have to count or measure my circles so much. And then just trace the circle of your choice and connect it with at least two cross braces to the center wire. This gets more important the bigger the shapes are to keep them all centered in space. If it is important to the project that it stays hollow, you can always edit the braces out at the end once the layers are joined in place. So what can you do with 10 circle sizes other than 10 different cylinders? Actually, surprising number of things. You get the idea. Now, how do you lift the layers to the right height? and make them stay there. This will require a bit of planning. Draw a cross section of your project, in our case an ellipsoid, and mark where the sizes of the circles that are available, remember we only have 10 of them, fall onto the outline of the project. If they fall too close together, skip some. Occasionally, not too often, you may find the circles are too far apart for the stability of the shape. And then what do you do if you need four and three quarters inch circle and don't have it? Then you may need to trace an additional circle in between the ones you do have to keep things reasonably stable. won't be nearly as nice and round as the mat circles, but it will do its job. Now we'll need something we can put in between our circles to keep them the right distance apart. I made a set of incrementally increasing spacers from Skinny Craft Sticks and the video of that process is in the description but you can use anything that's flat, stable and the right height. Right here you will see how far apart the layers need to be in the shape you are after. So 
plan what spacers are you going to use there to keep the circles at the right height from the previous one. Now we will stack it all according to our plan and see if the shape looks like the one we intended to get. If so, we are ready to join it all. And you can do this in two ways, either all at once, right now, like so. Just remember to secure each connecting line securely to each circle. After the first four connections, you can take out the spacers and continue to add more depending how solid you would like your surface to be. With the round objects, it's best to work on each half separately, from the skinny end to the wider end. And stop one step before the end of the second half. And then join them in the middle for a more seamless look. And here we go. Joining can also be done one layer at a time. Lifting the project, making another layer and joining that to the previous stack. Advantage of this method is that you don't need to build any precarious stacks and don't need quite so many spacers all at the same time. Just remember to wait for each new connection to solidify before you move anything. With good planning you will still end up with your desired shape. Even though you will need to do your own planning for each specific project, there are some general rules when it comes to shapes. If you use the same sized spacers throughout the project, you will get a straight sided shapes. Straight cone, straight sided pyramid, and straight sided whatever this is called. With incrementally enlarging spacers, the shapes will come out curved, going from smaller to larger, let's say 1 to 9, will produce convex shapes, paraboloid, and its equivalence in the square and triangular segments. And going from larger to smaller, 9 to 1, will produce concave shapes. I thought this was pretty cool when I first realized it worked this way. As I already mentioned, it is important to work from skinnier to wider, or at least joining the same size shape to same size shape. But going the other way, from wide to small, gets too awkward for a good access with the pen. With more complex shapes, you may need to work in separate segments that you will join later. So do remember to work each separate segment from skinny to wider. Until done. Finally, a few notes about the sizing possibilities of the mat. When I first saw this mat, I thought, well, you can't do a project that's bigger than 5 by 5 inches. But then I realized that the bottom three segments are actually endless patterns. So if you do need a bigger shape than 5 inches, like 7.5 inch bracelet, for example, you leave the end open Resnap your project back towards the edge 
and keep continuing the lines until you get your bracelet the right length. Also keep in mind that after making the basic grid that you have the grooves for, you can attach any number of lines to that grid that you don't have the grooves for, which expands your options endlessly. With the bottom three segments, you can get the project as long as you like and as wide as you like. With the top three segments, you can have the projects as tall as you like, but when it comes to the diameter of them, it's what you see is what you get. In this case, five inches. So what can you do if you really, really want a 16 inch ball? You can go to the 3D Pendant Etsy store and there are two sets of nesting geometric shapes. They are meant to be printed on a letter sized paper, which is already bigger than five inches, but you can also enlarge them and print in any size you need if you use the tile format and stick them together, like I have done here. Set 1 has circles, squares and ovals and also the color coding and additional divisions for the circle and the square segments of the mat to help you with patterns and the fill. Set 2 has polygons, a couple of triangles and a triangle chart for the triangle segment of the mat. Of course, you won't get the nice, easy, user-friendly silicone grooves to guide you. You will have to trace by hand or with a metal ruler. But otherwise, it's just a larger version of the same process. And you will be able to make a hexagonal basket, for example, in any size you wish. But if you are just starting out with 3D pen, the size of the mat is big enough to worry about until you get the hang of the process. So by now you can probably tell I really like this mat. I think it's worth every penny. And yeah, the link is in the description should you want to look for one. So until next time, go and make something.